So this is my um, program in which I calculated the, the, the path integral B to show Ampere's law works numerically. Uh, and I want to I want to make a graph. I want to add on to this a graph and maybe do something else, but we'll see. So let me just show you the uh, the program that I have so far. So this is a let me make this bigger. Make this bigger. That's good. So this right here is a wire. So it's a long wire and it's broken into a hundred pieces. They're actually uh, little spheres that are broken into, and each one of those has a current and a length, and a length vector, dl. So from that, I can calculate the magnetic field anywhere I want, anywhere over here. So what I did was actually make this path, and I integrated b.dl along this path, and then I calculated, based on Ampere's law, what's the current passing through that, and then what's the actual current passing through that, and you see that they're, they're pretty close. Okay, uh, but the key thing was look at right here. This is this is not centered, right? It's not in the center. So if you did this uh, as an integral, it would not be an easy integral because the magnetic field direction is not the same as the direction of the ring, and the magnitude is not the same. So uh, I could put it back at the center, and then you can see I get essentially the same thing over here. Let's put that at zero. Oh, I should I should copy this. Okay, so I still get the same thing, and now it's, it's, at, it's at the center. Okay, let's copy this and make a new program. And let's say, uh, I'm going to call this plotting b.dl for wire, right? So I want to I want to plot b.dl as I go along that thing. And in particular, you know, what happens if my loop is not... Oh, I didn't even change the size. I could change the size of that loop, too. Okay, but what if, my loop, what if the current doesn't even pass through the loop? What would happen then? Okay, so let's make a graph. Let's start off with a graph. I'll just put it up here at the top. T graph equals graph. That's an object that's built into uh, Python. And then I'm going to say, uh, I can give it a title. And this will call uh, b.dl. I don't know that that seems kind of strange. Uh, and then uh, the x title is going to be equal to, mm, it's actually the distance along the path. So let's call this s, right? That's the arc length, s in meters. And then the, <clears throat> the y title, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a cumulative sum. So this will be, uh, I guess, b dot bdl total that's kind of weird i know and that's in uh tesla meters okay nope oh. now i'm going to need to make a, something to plot what's called f1 equals g curve uh color equals color dot blue and then now all i need to do is down here uh okay so let's just go through this program uh, here's my length, my current. This is this stuff. All this stuff just makes the wire. So if you want to change any properties of the wire, that's what you where you do it. This stuff just calculates the magnetic field at any location that I put in here. Uh, path is the actual path, so I can go around and and calculate stuff. So that's where this is where I do the actual integration. No, yes, no. That's just, I just make the path. Okay, down here I actually calculate b.dl. So there's the magnitude, I mean the vector magnetic field at each location, and this is the sum, right? Uh, and then here I'm just changing the color, which I'm going to fix in a little bit, hopefully. And so b sum is the cumulative sum of the b.dl's as I go around, and that's what I want to plot. So let's say f1.plot. Um, hmm, I guess I need a value of s. Let's do this. s equals 0. And then down here, um, RT is a sphere in my path. And RT.DL is the vector length of that. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, the so if I say S equals S plus mag of RTT.DL, so mag, ma, that's the magnitude of that. And if I add it to that list, that actually gets a cumulative 
path around the whole thing. I think that should work. Okay, so then I'm going to plot uh, S and B sum. And let's see if that works. If that works, I'm going to be I'm going to be kind of happy. And it didn't work. X T. Look at that. X tie idle. Way up there, I made a silly mistake. That's fine. I can fix that. Okay, so there's a graph. Okay, so that's fine. That's exactly what we want, right? Because this is why that integral is so easy. Because b dot dl is just the same amount each time. So as we go around the path, it adds up to something very easy. Uh, this distance should be the total uh, radius of the circle. So this is um, the, the circumference of the circle. I have 0.6. Let's print that out. Uh, let's print out circumfer circum circumference equals. It's going to be uh, 2 times pi times the radius of my circle, which was path, r path. R path. Okay, let's see that. Let's run that. And that's in meters, but I didn't put the units. Okay, yeah. So see, there you go. There's the circumference of the circle, 0.628. So that worked, right? That's going all the way around the circle. And then this is the total flux, uh, which I need to multiply by or divide by mu naught to get I. Okay, so... But that seems like it works. So now let's move the wire shifted to the side and see what happens. So I'm going to go over here. My radius is point, what was it? Point 0.1 meters. So if I move this uh, wire up here, the starting location, let's move it to negative 0 0.05. I'm shifting it a little bit to the left. And now I'll run it. So you see right there the... It still looks good, but now you see it's not the same. The, the path length is the same, right? It's still, and the total flux, the total b dot dl is the same. It's not flux, I'm sorry. But now you see we have this curved path in there because at this part down here, it's the flux, the b dot dl is small for each piece because it's further away. And then it gets greater over here on this side because it's closer. But it still works. So over here, b dot dl is is larger because it's closer to the wire, and here it's further away. But overall, it still gets the same thing. I'm kind of happy with that. Okay, um, let's do this real quick. Uh, no, I'm going to move it, and then I'll do this. So now let's move the wire outside of the loop. So I'm going to put this at negative 0.15 and run it. The first thing you'll notice is that the some of these b.dl's are blue and I made them blue if it's a negative. So if 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 I use my right hand rule, let's see, it doesn't work cuz it's backwards. If I use my right hand rule well, whatever. Uh then if I use my right hand rule, I'll put on this uh the magnetic I'm going around the loop this way, but the magnetic field is this way now, right? Because of the way I turned it. So B dot DL are in the opposite directions. So this is going to be a negative B. B dot DL is going to be a negative value. And then over here, it'd be positive. So if you look at B dot DL over the whole thing, I go from zero, I increase, and I then I have negative B dot DL. So I get back to very close to zero. Not exactly because just of integration problems. I mean, numerical integration problems. But I have the same length. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, now, I want to fix this. I want to make the opacity of each one proportional to its b dot dl. But in order to do that, opacity is a value from 0 to 1. So I need to know what the maximum b dot dl is. So let's go over here in the plot. I'm not going to plot b sum. I'm going to plot db. db b sum, right? So that's just the piece of each one. And I can see uh, the maximum value it's going to get. So here I have uh, that's at 
5 times 10 to the negative 9th, and this is down to negative 3 times 10 to the 8th. So if I do, let's say, 3 times 10 to the negative 8th, let's just do that. So B max, let's go up here and I'm going to say uh, DB max is 3E negative 8. So now I'm going to turn this back to the sum. Now, and, and now that amount is going to depend on, if I change the number of pieces I have, that's going to change. So you got to be careful with that. Okay, so now I'm going to set, I set the color, um, and I'm going to say rtt.opacity equals um, db sum divided by db max. Yeah, so db sum divided by db max. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. rtt.opacity equals db sum divided by db max. And again, the, I have to cheat because I, I, don't, I can't have an opacity greater than 1. I mean, I could. It would just be 1. Uh, but let's see if this works. Oh, it, it did work. Okay, so it's a little dark, right? Um, oh, this one has to be negative. Because here the db max is negative, so those don't show up at all. There, that's better. So there, see, these red ones aren't as bright. Um, so let's see, let's turn down the db maxness. So if I put db max at, let's say, 2. Does that look better? Yeah, that looks better. I mean, it's a little dim. I kind of like it better the other way. But here you'll see right there, That's look, you see something really important. The b.dls are about 0 because the path is this way, but db is perpendicular to that. I mean, the magnetic field is perpendicular to that. So you get a ba basically nothing. I'm pretty happy with this. That looks pretty good. OK, let's try one more thing. What if I take my circle and let me run this again so I reset the thing. So here's my circle this way. What if I take that circle and rotate it that way? Still, I have no uh, magnetic, I mean, I have no current passing through it. So the total B.DL should be zero. But what would happen? I don't know. OK, so let's go up to the path. Here's where I make the path. And what I want to change is instead of um, this is a path in the XZ plane. So if I have it like that, I want it in the YZ plane. So that should work if I just go over here and take this out. Let's just take that out and put the zero over here. I think that will work. I'm, the only thing I'm worried about is DL. Okay, DL. Yeah, DL, I have to change that too. Because here, I calculate the DL based on the axis of the cylinder this way in the y direction. But now I'm actually going to have it in the x direction. So I need to change this too. OK. Now let's just run it and see what happens. OK. Yeah. Check that out. That works. And let's look at the, the plot. OK, so again, that and that well look at that nice little sign hmm. that's pretty cool okay um, the, the, I think it'd be fun to kind of like make the wire go through at an angle but I'm I'm kind of concerned about breaking stuff so I think I'm gonna stop here I'm pretty happy with this graph and this opacity thing um, I may have to actually change the opacity here maximum because we have different values. Um, I could change the size of the ring. I could change the location of the ring. I could do a whole bunch of stuff. But it looks like everything's working. I'm pretty happy with this. And so maybe you can play with this program. I'm really using this to build up a presentation about the difference between Ampere's Law and Gauss's Law. I want some nice pictures. And so I make the pictures in Python. So I'm making the pictures, and then I'll make the, the thing later. So there you go. I'll talk to you guys later. Oh, and I am going to include the code down below. I'll include some other. Um, Links down below that hopefully will be useful.